Hey everyone, this is Cameron Ellis, Senior Geographer here at Rainforest Foundation US, and it's safe to say that 2020 is not the year that we were expecting. When country borders started shutting down in early February, and it was clear that COVID-19 was going to turn the world upside down, our first concern was for our partners in Central and South America. The places we work have a long history of vulnerability to epidemics and few of the public health resources available in the global north. Sadly, I think coronavirus outdid even our worst fears in many parts of the Amazon, and many governments underperformed even our lowest expectations. That said, in Peru, facing one of the deadliest outbreaks on the planet, we and our partners at Orpio moved quickly to shut down access to communities while also organizing the purchase and distribution of massive quantities of masks, gowns, soap, and food. We also worked together to illustrate COVID health information for indigenous communities in nearly a dozen languages. Monitors, who had been accustomed to tracking deforestation on smartphones, switched gears overnight to tracking possible COVID cases and supporting response measures. Guyana and Brazil saw spikes in illegal mining the moment the virus hit and government agencies were pulled away from law enforcement. Fortunately, local indigenous organizations across the region stepped in to fill the gap, building blockades to their territories, controlling entry, tracking cases, distributing supplies, and in some cases, kicking the miners out themselves. We also supported the Yanomami and Yaquana peoples of Brazil in their campaign to evict 20,000 illegal miners from their territory. With indigenous and allied organizations, we delivered a petition with almost 440,000 signatures supporting this demand. And in a historic first, the spirits of the forest took over Brazil's iconic Congress buildings. In Panama, we and our allies built a coalition of NGOs, indigenous organizations, and government agencies centered on an interactive mapping platform to coordinate responses across the country. Meanwhile, back at the office, we launched several initiatives to raise funds and awareness about how the crisis was impacting indigenous communities. Virtual music events raised over $300,000 for COVID aid. And together with partners, we launched the Amazon Emergency Fund, which became a go-to mechanism for channeling emergency funds directly to indigenous communities. More than 40 organizations came together to fundraise, and a very generous contribution from the French government is helping push $2.6 million of support to the farthest corners of the Amazon. And while COVID dominated the headlines, it wasn't the only story this year. But before I move on, I'd like to take a moment to remember the indigenous leaders and community members that we lost in 2020. In other 2020 news, Panama's Naso people notched a massive victory when the government officially recognized 160,000 hectares of indigenous land, an area about half the size of Rhode Island, stunning coastal mountains and forests teeming with wildlife. In Peru, the widows of the Ashaninka village of Saweto, whose husbands were assassinated in 2014 for defending their lands, testified to the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights which resulted in the commission formally calling on the government of Peru to fully investigate and prosecute their killers. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm ready to close the book on 2020 and saddle up for 2021.